Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the June 8th, 2020 City Council meeting. I will now call the meeting to order. Please note that this meeting is being attended by City Council and staff via Zoom teleconference. Thank you for your patience as we continue to navigate city business through this meeting process. For the benefit of the public and as required by the Brown Act, the vote will be by roll call. City Clerk, could you please take roll? Yes, Mayor Sestarsik? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Kalmick? Here. Council Member Moore? Here. Council Member Masalavit? Here. Council Member Verapapa? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. We'll move on now to approval of agenda and waiver of full reading of resolutions and ordinances. By motion of the City Council, this is the time to notify the public of any changes to the agenda and or rearrange the order of the agenda. Does anyone want to pull a consent calendar item? Okay, City Clerk, do we have any supplemental communications? Yes, Mayor, we received, we received three supplemental communications. They have been uploaded to the city's website and made available to the public. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like uh, to please call for a motion to approve the agenda then. So moved. Okay, thank you, Verapapa, Mr. Verapapa. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Joe. Okay, um, City Clerk Harper, could you uh, take the vote by roll call, please? Yes, Mayor Sestarsik, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kalmick, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Moore, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Masalavid, how do you vote? Councilmember Masalavid, how do you vote? Yes. Gonna, can yes. You hear me? I can now. Okay. So motion carries five votes, yes. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was all. Okay, we'll move on, <clears throat> excuse me, to presentations and recognitions. Seal Beach COVID-19 Local Emergency Review. Uh, Chief Gonchak, could you please give us a presentation? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, City Council, City Manager Ingram, City staff, as well as the public. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank everybody who's reached out to the Seal Beach Police Department, as well as City staff for our incident over the weekend. With that, uh, before we begin, as uh, we've gone over the last few City Council meetings, I'd like to give a global view of our updated statistics as it relates to COVID-19. Worldwide, our cases are up about 12% since uh, last week to 7,081,665. Worldwide deaths are now up to 405,002. The United States is up uh, with the highest numbers of cases in the world at 1,955,711. Deaths in the United States are now at 110,876. Stateside here in California, we now have 131,030 cases. Behind New York and New Jersey, we are now third in the nation for our numbers. We are now at 4,333 deaths here in just California. Moving on to here in Orange County, we now have 7,527 cases with a death toll of 177. 136 of those deaths are age 65 and over, 32 are age 45 to 64, six are age 35 to 44, and three are age 25 to 34. The gender difference, we now have males at 100 and females at 77. Our Orange County hospitals now have 291 cases hospitalized with 135 of those units in the intensive care unit. Next, some bordering municipality and Seal Beach data specific. The city of Long Beach has now 200, 
I'm sorry, 2,273 cases with 100 deaths. The city of Huntington Beach is now at 369 cases. Cyprus now at 79. City of Los Alamitos at 86. City of Garden Grove with 420. City of Westminster at 138. Here in Seal Beach, we now have 28 confirmed cases according to the Orange County Health Authority. A data analysis of Orange County Fire Authority calls for service involving infectious diseases from March 7th to May 31st have totaled 6,708 cases. Seal Beach was roughly 2.4% of all those calls with 164 of them. Again, this is pretty consistent with what we've been reporting to everybody for the last few weeks. If we can move on to the next slide, I will explain some other information as we move forward. As it relates to our phases here in the city of Seal Beach and our um, approach to reopen the city and our glimmer of hope as we move on throughout this pandemic, we are proposing tonight um, effective sunrise tomorrow, the reopening of the pier, allowing uh, passive use on our beaches, allowing beach parking to return to 100% normal use, install the volleyball nets, and reopen Gum Grove for passive use as well. Next slide, please. As we move on through our phases, we call this soft because we do plan on uh, opening up the playgrounds, pools, Arbor Park, and city-sponsored recreation activities at a later time. However, due to the amount of uh, work it takes to get those opened, we are asking to uh, remain patient for those items within the next coming few weeks so that we can come up with a plan on how to implement, to implement all of them uh, and present to you all at a future time. As always, we will ask and hope that our uh, community will comply as well as um, uh, give social distancing and physical distancing of six feet or more when recreating or resting outdoors. We are asking people to uh, leave a public space if you cannot maintain social or physical distancing and to not get any kind of physical or verbal altercations over it. Face coverings are still recommended anywhere in town and Orange County Board of Supervisors is requiring all people to wear face coverings when within six feet of people who are not within your household. Again, we ask everybody to remain self-quarantined and seek medical attention if they or she or he feel ill or are symptomatic. Next slide, please. This is a graphic of what will be posted along our piers and excuse me, along our pier and along our beaches as well. Again, the basics, we're just asking people to keep a physical distance of at least six feet and reminding everyone that the Orange County Health Order requires face coverings when within six feet of people outside of your own household. All questions in regarding the beach and the pier should be forwarded to the Marine Safety Department. The phone number there is listed at the bottom. Next slide, please. Director Les Johnson would like to give a community development update. Therefore, I'll pass the baton to him. Les. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Romero Council members, I just wanted to take a moment to give you an update as to the status of business reopening uh, here in Seal Beach. Uh, next slide. As a matter of background, uh, the state allowed conditional reopening of stage two, stage two businesses back on May 18th uh, for those counties that have received variance approval from the state. Orange County uh, received variance approval back on May 23rd, which subsequently allowed for restaurants uh, in our community to have dine-in customers as well as retail uh, to once again have customers within their stores uh, with both business types having a number of conditions that need to be met. In addition, on May 26, uh, the state allowed for barbershops and hair salons to once again reopen and also with a number of conditions associated with uh, reo those reopenings. And then uh, this past Friday, June 5th, uh, the state announced that a number of the stage three business sectors uh, can conditionally reopen uh, on, on or shortly after June 12th. I do want to point out though that uh, that is a allowance that has to be uh, addressed on a, a county by county basis by the public health officials in those counties. And it's only for those counties that have received variance approval from the state. The stage three business sectors that are being allowed to reopen will include gyms, fitness centers, bars, wineries, 
hotels, camping and outdoor recreation facilities, family entertainment centers, movie theaters, and a few other types. And we are awaiting at this point in time, the Orange County Public Health officials approval in order to move forward uh, with those openings uh, as soon as this coming Friday. As we wait for that though, we would encourage uh, all businesses that fit in those categories to visit the state's COVID-19 website because the industry guidance documents uh, are, are published that help businesses uh, prepare accordingly for reopening. So again, uh, visiting the state's COVID-19 website, uh, also subsequently the county public health website. Both of those are great resources of information for our business community. And then our city website is also an information resource as well. So with that, that includes uh, my update for this evening. I'll turn it back over to Chief Goncha. Thank you, Les. Before we move on, I'd like to uh, again, thank everybody for their time and their patience. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now. If not, this concludes our presentation. City Manager Ingram. Yes, Chief. Um, and last, thank you both very much. Um, council, um, this concludes our update um, to the council and community tonight. Um, our, the highlights are obviously um, the soft reopening of phase four for the beach in motion plan for our beaches, the pier, uh, in our parking lots, as well as um, our update in terms of, of what we anticipate coming forward with the um, stage three reopening and how that potentially would impact certain businesses within um, that stage. And so with that, unless um, there's specific questions of council, um, that concludes our presentation tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Did anyone have any questions on the presentation? Okay, seeing none, thank you very much. We'll move on to oral communications. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the council cannot discuss or take action on any item not on the agenda unless authorized by law. No other business shall be considered. All email comments the city clerk received before the start of the meeting were distributed to the city council and made available to the public on the city's website. Email comments received after the start of the meeting will be forwarded to the city council after the meeting. City clerk, do we have any emailed comments? Yes, mayor, we received four emailed comments. They've been made available to the council and they are also on the city's website. Okay, thank you very much. City attorney report. Um, Mr. Steele, did you have a report? Thank you, Mayor. Prior to the meeting this evening, the council met in closed session regarding the one item on the posted agenda. All council members were present uh, by telephone. The council took a report from staff and took no reportable action. Okay, we'll move on to city manager report. City manager Ingram, do you have anything to report? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, as you know, we held two annual budget workshops over the past two weeks to present the proposed annual fiscal year 2021 general fund budget, as well as the proposed CIP budget. The first virtual workshop was held on Thursday, May 28th, and the second virtual workshop was held last Thursday, June 4th. And although staff and council were unable to implement many improvements to our annual budget development process that would have provided for greater community participation as a result of COVID-19. I'm pleased with the outcome of these two budget workshops and therefore staff's work plan moving forward as we continue to navigate the ongoing economic impacts of COVID-19. I think it's also important to note again that we Look forward to many more enhancements to our annual budget process and budget document next year, hopefully in a much healthier environment when public meetings are once again safe for the community, the council and staff. So tonight I felt it was important to again acknowledge the efforts that were accomplished with staff and the council working together, even more so in a virtual environment as a result of the circumstances that were forced upon us about three months ago now as a result of COVID-19. Our staff team was extremely pleased after a significant amount of hard work and many, many ongoing revisions to the draft budget 
as a result of fluctuating revenue projections, as a consequence of economic impacts from this ongoing stay at home orders, to be able to present the council with a proposed budget for fiscal year 2021 that is balanced without the use of reserves and maintains and preserves expected high levels of service to our community, as well as maintaining and preserving our staffing levels. I know that the council will undoubtedly agree that this has been no small accomplishment. Therefore, I want to, again, especially thank and commend our, our executive team and their respective support staff members for working endless hours doing the, during this unprecedented time. In addition to managing the day-to-day -day impacts of a worldwide public health crisis, as well as continuing to provide daily ongoing services to our community, all of which has been an incredibly challenging task. I also want to thank the council for your guidance, leadership, patience, and your direction throughout the past three months, not only uh, during this year's budget development process, but especially your ongoing support and appreciation of our entire staff team during this very challenging time. Finally, as a result of the discussions, questions, input, and direction provided collectively by the council following both of our budget study sessions, Staff is already working diligently to finalize the proposed budget for your consideration and adoption at the June 22nd council meeting. The proposed draft budget is available online in the budget section of the finance department page of the city website at sealbeachca.gov. Also the recorded virtual meetings for both budget study sessions as well as staff presentations are available online on the city clerk department page of the city website as well. That concludes my report tonight, Mayor, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We'll move on <clears throat> to council comments um, and reporting pursuant to AB 1234. Uh, council member Masalavit, do you have anything to report? I did um, attend by um, phone meeting um, the Operations Committee of the San, uh, Orange County Sanitation District. Uh, it was uh, quite interesting. We had an opportunity to go over uh, the, their larger projects that were ready to be completed. And we had an opportunity to review uh, change orders and uh, it was quite enlightening on how um, some of their projects uh, were victims of change orders, uh, just for lack of a better term. Um, but with, it, with explanation, everything uh, sounded right and we were able to approve um, the projects that were ready uh, to be completed. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Councilman Moore, do you have uh, anything to report? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I attended a board meeting a few weeks ago for the Orange County Fire Authority. I've been working for the past several months, contacting directors on the board and working with the, our city manager and other cities in lobbying to get a modification for cash contract cities of which Seal Beach is one. At our last meeting, there was a vote of 16 to seven, which approved the modification of the Orange County Fire Authority budget. And I'm happy to report that the cash contract cities were given some relief for next year's budget. Uh, each year, Seal Beach has an increase of around 4.5% for its fire related services. And with this change next year, Seal Beach will not be required to pay the extra fee that is usually required to pay down uh, pensions. So the percentage increase will be around 2% increase instead of the 4.5%. And so for Seal Beach, this means saving about $170,000 in next year's budget. And I'll continue to work with these same cities uh, to see if we can continue the savings for future years. And that's all I have, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Council member Bear Papa, do you have a report? 
No, I have no reportable action items. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Kalmick, do you have a report? Um, I'm going to withhold my comments until the uh, council item presentation on the temporary business support measures. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I think I got everybody then. So we'll move on then to council items. Item A, consideration of COVID-19 related temporary business reopening support measures. City Manager Ingram, do you have a report? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, as the council will recall at, the, at our last meeting on May 26, our regular meeting, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kalmick expressed his concerns regarding the impacts of the stay at home orders on our businesses. Staff was directed to evaluate potential options to promote stability and future success for Seal Beach businesses, including a proposed plan for COVID 19 related temporary business reopening support measures marketing opportunities, as well as a budget plan. So staff tonight is prepared to present those opportunities for temporary business support measures that the city can implement with council approval tonight to promote our local business recovery. Um, I'd like an opportunity to thank our community development director, Les Johnson, for his leadership and all the work he has done on this effort, especially in such a short period of time as well as the time and input that Mayor Pro Tem Kalmick and Council Member Vera Papa have invested with staff discussing potential business assistance and economic development options to directly assist and promote our local businesses. At this time, I will turn the presentation over to our Community Development Director, Les Johnson. Les? Thank you, City Manager Ingram. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, uh, we have a presentation for you tonight. Uh, next slide, please. COVID-19 has significantly impacted virtually all every Seal Beach business. The state stay-at-home order issued back on March 19th shut down all non-essential businesses. Most local restaurants modified operations and stayed open, providing takeout and delivery opportunities. The state issued a resiliency roadmap back on May 7th and the roadmap specifically identifies four recovery stages. The state completely reopened stage two on May 18th at the counties receiving variance clearance from the state. Orange County received variance clearance on May 23rd, allowing for restaurant dining in and retail customers to reopen with certain social distancing conditions. Restaurants are required to reduce occupancy in order to meet those conditions most losing most of their indoor eating opportunities, uh, at least 50, sometimes up to 70% of their space is lost. The next slide. During the May 26th city council meeting, council member Kalmick requested of staff to evaluate what the city could implement to promote stability and the future success of our local businesses. It was specifically asked that staff look into temporary outdoor dining spaces a marketing plan to implement jointly with the Chamber of Commerce and to consider the option of parklets within the Main Street corridor as part of the Main Street Enhancement Project. As a result, staff is reporting back this evening in response to the request with options for your consideration this evening. Next slide. The first item uh, is outdoor dining. As previously noted, social distancing requirements for dining in restaurants are limiting the amount of tables and chairs available for patrons. In addition, the governor and others have been encouraging outdoor dining due to air circulation and, and reduced risk associated with that. The Seal Beach Municipal Code currently addresses outdoor dining on private property. There are a number of requirements applicable to outdoor dining, including seating, hours of operations, noise standards, parking requirements, outdoor lighting, and the like. Outdoor dining is currently not permitted within the public right of way. Should be noted that most Main Street restaurants don't currently have outdoor dining, nor do they have private space available for this type of use. Thus, staff is recommending easing the current code requirements in order to allow temporary outdoor dining on both private property as well within the public right of way, specifically within the sidewalks along Main Street or within the Main Street corridor. This would allow for use of off street parking 
for temporary outdoor dining, shared dining areas to also be established, as well as limited use of sidewalk areas where space will allow for such. Next slide. Should this be allowed, staff would utilize a temporary outdoor dining permit. This would allow for consideration of these proposed outdoor dining spaces on a case by case basis. When using public sidewalk space, the process would specifically address matters associated with what's typically called an encroachment permit and addressing matters such as liability, identification, and insurance. Staff is also recommending waiving of all fees associated with this specific temporary use. An approved temporary outdoor dining permit would be allowed to operate for up to 30 days after the lifting of indoor occupancy restrictions. This would also assume that the permittee uh, is adhering to the conditions of approval that are imposed. And we identified a 30 day period only because there is a time needed for the restaurants to be able to adjust and acclimate uh, to the ability to bring their all of their uh, indoor dining back to 100% occupancy. Uh, the next slide, please. In addition to the temporary outdoor dining opportunity, staff was also proposing to establish temporary Main Street shared dining areas. As previously noted, most Main Street corridor restaurants do not have outdoor dining and will only gain a limited amount of tables and chairs on the sidewalks if they're granted an outdoor dining permit and if space allows. Providing another dining option would be a value to customers wanting food from a certain, food from a certain restaurant but are not able to dine there due to limited seating. We'd be proposing to establish two common dining areas where customers could go to and enjoy their to-go food. It would be located at two different locations, one at Electric Avenue and one of the city parking lots. And the second location would utilize a portion of Eisenhower Park. They would operate seven days a week with evening hours only during the week and extending the hours to cover afternoons and evenings on the weekends. Staff resources would be needed to maintain the area in order to ensure they are kept clean and properly sanitized. There would be tables, chairs, sanitizing stations, portable restrooms, uh, and music, uh, amplified music at a low level provided. There is also a proposal to include small scale live entertainment uh, periodically at those two locations. And the weekly expenses identified would be approximately, or not to exceed, I should say, $11,000. And that's based on a, a capacity of 20 tables and 120 chairs at each of the identified locations. Next slide, please. Our local, uh, as our local businesses start to reopen, a marketing effort would help promote our community increase awareness of our local businesses. The intent is to drive customer interest to all Seal Beach businesses, including retail, restaurants, and services. We intend to utilize local resources for this effort, which would be done in conjunction with the Seal Beach Chamber of Commerce. We would consider a number of market opportunities, such as themes, promotional events, and heavy utilization of social media and email campaigns. This would be done under the guidance of a qualified local firm. We've identified a cost effort not to exceed $30,000 for this item. Next slide, please. Prior to the coronavirus pandemic uh, and the recent outdoor dining interest, a number of communities were looking into different ways to utilize the streetscape, their streetscapes. Uh, this is very common within our region and across the nation. Parklets have become a focus for both dining as well as for general seating. A number of cities in our area have accelerated their plans in order to allow for these type of uses, some on a temporary basis, some are considering it permanently. However, most of these cities have multiple downtown streets, a much larger area, and their parking options vary. The city's Main Street Enhancement Steering Committee was actively meeting prior to the virus, and a number of ideas and options were being considered uh, for the Main Street corridor. Thus, uh, staff is recommending that the issue of parklets be an item for the steering committee to look into and consider once they reconvene. Next slide. And with that, 
uh, staff has identified the recommendation as identified here that the council take the necessary action to allow the temporary dining administrative review process for COVID-19 related temporary outdoor dining in public sidewalk areas within the main street corridor, as well as on private property and proximity to restaurants throughout the community and to waive all application fees to to approve the establishment of two temporary outdoor dining areas within the Main Street corridor and establish a budget of not to exceed $110,000 for that effort. Three, establish a marketing and promotional campaign of $30,000 to be used to support reopening of Seal Beach businesses. And four, direct the finance director to include $140,000 in the fiscal year 2020 21 proposed budget for this purpose of using general fund reserves. And with that, that would include my staff report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, Joe, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Council Mayor Pro Tem Kalmick, did you have uh, comments on this item? Uh, yes, um, I would uh, be very much in favor of us going forward with this plan. I know that uh, Les has spent a lot of time interviewing business owners, restaurant owners, um, scoping out the physical layout of the Main Street Corridor. And I think that uh, given the fact that we're not having a car show, we're not going to have a fish fry, there's really going to be no events that usually draw people from outside the city to come into town. And the fact that even given permission to open, it's going to be in problematic for many of the restaurants to operate at 30 to 50 percent of their capacity since their overhead is going to remain at 100 percent for the most part. Um, with regard to the funds that we would be expending, I don't view this as a bailout of any of our Seal Beach businesses, whether they be restaurants or otherwise. Uh, I, some have suggested just to uh, give grants to um, to the various businesses and, and in a sense do what they want with it. Well, I, I don't think that our effort in this uh, arena should be going towards um, paying back rent. I think this is an investment in the Main Street Corridor as well as our other businesses up in the Rossmore Center and the Target Center um, who have restaurants where having some outdoor seating that would replace some of the seating that they would not be able to have inside. And it's so it's an investment in bringing our businesses back, which ultimately bring back the sales tax revenue that we've already seen is going to be sorely missed. So with that, I would um, throw my support to um, proceeding and moving ahead with the plan. Okay, Count, um, Council Member Vera Papa, did you have comments? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Sasarsik. Um, thank you, Les, for the um, presentation. I just had a couple of quick questions. The um, the areas that are going to be um, the breakout areas, how how will that be handled as far as like trash and stability of chairs and tables and and stuff like that? Yes, yeah, so we will, uh, they will be staffed. Uh, we will be daily bringing in the chairs, setting up and, and then removing those at night. Uh, and again, they'll be staffed while, uh, while they're open for use. So we want to make sure again, it's a well-maintained and sanitary environment. So it does require staff resources to stay on top of that to ensure that uh, trash is properly taken care of in a timely manner um, within the areas as well as sanitizing of tables, chairs, and the like. So uh, again, we wanna make sure that in this current uh, situation, this current environment, that it's a uh, well cared for and uh, clean environment uh, for those uh, wishing to part, uh, utilize the, those sites. And I, I appreciate you reaching out to um, the many businesses. I know there's not a one fit solution for um, every city. I know every city is kind of doing it differently. I know um, we had many discussions about um, the alternatives. And I would um, assume this would be like a dynamic experience and things can be altered and, and continuously as you know what works and what doesn't work for that purpose. 
Absolutely, especially with those uh, communal dining locations. Uh, we we yeah. see this as something that we hope would be a, a quite a success, but we'd be watching that very closely and making adjustments as uh, as needed. Um, and uh, you know, we we could even be providing reports, and probably would be providing reports back to council on a regular basis regarding the how the operation is is going. Yeah, and, and my only concern would be, you know, some type of party atmosphere, if you will. But I, I understand there'll be um, plenty of staff around and we can obviously change what would work and what doesn't work. And I would um, also like to add that it doesn't just help the restaurants if we have the foot traffic um, coming down the main street for these restaurants, but it also helps all the other businesses, wouldn't you think? Uh, absolutely. The, you know, the idea is um, if, if there's a concern over seating and people being able to get into restaurants, they may choose an alternate location, uh, even possibly outside our community. And the thought was if there's additional seating, uh, they would take advantage of that as well as hopefully stay in the downtown and be able to uh, uh, frequent uh, our other businesses within that corridor. Yeah, that's kind of what I foresee too. So I think it's a good investment. Um, just one more question about the, um, how, do the, how does it work with the private centers as far as the communal dining um, locations like Rossmore Center or uh, Pacific Gateway and stuff like that? Are they just allowed to do it if they want to do it anyway? Or is this something they would kind of piggyback on to or just a little bit of both? It, it would be of, you know, their doing. Um, they would need to get a temporary dining permit, you know, for that. Um, but we would definitely, uh, you know, encourage that if there's uh, locations within those centers where it would make sense to uh, maybe consolidate and have multiple restaurants use that. Uh, however, we envision in a lot of those centers because of the location of the restaurants that they probably would would want to have that uh, right right adjacent to or a close proximity to the restaurant. But that's something we would definitely be working with, uh, be it shops at Rossmore or any of the of our our centers to you know to help them. Uh, make that a reality for them. And I really appreciate all the time that you spent. I know it's not an easy task, especially in a city like this, because there's so many moving parts. But I would concur with Mayor Pro Tem Kalmick to move forward. So thank you very much. That's all I have. Okay. Councilman Moore, did you have any comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, how, how many businesses did we contact on Main Street and or is, did we, uh, how, I guess, how many businesses do you feel support this? Uh, uh, we didn't, I didn't pull the businesses, but I did speak with uh, five different business owners representing uh, eight uh, restaurants in the Main Street corridor. Okay, they're, they're all in support of this? Uh, they were all in support, especially of the sidewalk dining. I do know that two of those business owners reported to me that they had spoke with a number of other uh, businesses, but I don't, I don't have specifics other than what they just generally represented, um, and all were in support of uh, what's being proposed. And the chamber too, excuse me? Yeah, yes, I also uh, have been working with, uh, with the chamber president, with Corey, with regards to uh, all of this information. And uh, you said there are going to be set areas. Are, are they also going to be allowed to have some tables on the sidewalks next to their restaurant? Um, yeah, so two separate items. We would have the two communal uh, dining areas at uh, one of the Electric Avenue parking lots and then again at Eisenhower Park. And then each individual restaurant could uh, could work with us and apply for uh, the ability through the temporary dining permit, outdoor dining permit, to be able to establish, um, to be able to establish uh, an area in, in proximity to their restaurant. So we'd have to look at it on a case by case basis to ensure ADA compliance can be met in, in the appropriate dimensions and uh, and the like. Um, but in in walking the Main Street corridor, there are a number of the restaurants that do have some space available for smaller bistro type tables to be established. Okay, did you consider um, that to keep, so the parking spaces on Main Street will remain open? 
Uh, that is correct. What we're proposing tonight would not have an impact on the angled parking along Main Street. The only impact would be to a uh, hand, uh, approximately 14 to 16 stalls in one of the Electric Avenue parking uh, areas. And uh, how long would this uh, go for? Uh, so for the uh, the temporary allowances that we provide to each individual business, uh, they would be allowed, once they're approved, they would be allowed to continue that activity until uh, they're granted occupancy back into their restaurant at, at the full amount. And um, then we would give them a 30-day window uh, to make that shift, and then the, uh, uh, the permit would expire. Okay. And the, the, the 30,000 for marketing, you said you'd work with the chamber on, on how that would be spent to market uh, this, is that right? Yes, we would, we would, we would do a cooperative uh, effort jointly with them to, uh, you know, our, our interest is to do it citywide. And so we, we definitely want to make sure that we're doing that joint, jointly with the, the chamber and their efforts. Okay, and yeah, I, I also agree that we should make it as easy as possible, considering these circumstances for restaurants, especially to make some money back. So I'm in favor of this also. Uh, thanks. Okay, uh, Council Member Masalava, did you have quest uh, questions or comments? Yeah, I, um, how, the $110,000, that includes the staff time and the rental of chairs and tables for a 30-day period? That would, uh, yes. It, it covers all of the, the expenses as we have estimated them out, projected them out, uh, including staff time. And if we were to start this uh, last weekend of June, uh, we believe that the 110,000 would give us a uh, approximately a 10 week window. So that would get us uh, through the end of August. Um, and besides the two um, areas for dining, kind of communal dining, um, are the restaurants going to be allowed to have tables and chairs somewhere on the sidewalk? Yes, they would have to apply for a temporary dining permit and we review them on a case by case basis. Um, uh, so for example, I'll, I'll pick on uh, a, a restaurant where I, I, I met with uh, Javatini's. Uh, the owner of Javatini's would like to, to be able to establish uh, three or four bistro tables uh, on the Central Avenue side of his of his business. He would submit an application to us. Uh, we would review that uh, and make sure that since it's use of public property that uh, that he's addressing identification, hold harmless, and insurance requirements. We define the area that the tables could be established and identify any conditions associated with that and issue the permit. And then he would be responsible to utilize that space in accordance with the conditions of, of the permit. Um, have you considered placing, allowing the placing of, um, what do you call them, bistro tables uh, in the area where, between the ficus trees on the curb side of, a, of the sidewalk where there is a restaurant adjacent, instead of putting bistro tables up against the building um, where they would more interfere with pedestrians. Do you get what I mean? Uh, yes, I believe so. And, and we're, open, we're open to that. We, those are are uh, items that we would want to consider on a on a case by case basis with each restaurant and their submittal. Um, in some locations, the only opportunity might be up against the building. In other situations, you mentioned they may be able to pull that out uh, a little bit away from the building. Um, but again, those are matters that, because of the uniqueness of Main Street, they really need to be looked at on a case by case basis. Um, unfortunately, there's a couple of restaurant locations that I saw 
while investigating this that I don't know if they'll be able to get any in there only because of ADA requirements and uh, and the hardscape that's needed for pedestrian movement. But but again, those are matters that we have to look at uh, with each request and, and work with each uh, uh, restaurant owner uh, to see if that, that can happen in front of their restaurant. Okay, thank you. Oh, and one other question, the 30,000 for marketing, how would, what do you envision that being spent on? Uh, in a variety of ways, we, we hope to come up with, a, a, you know, some, some different type of, uh, uh, how do I, how do I say it right? To slogans, if you will, uh, oh. uh, hope maybe even a, a, a logo or two, um, and then being able to utilize, um, just a, a variety of different ways. We, we need to talk with a couple, we have a couple of local um, consultants that we've initially conversed with and we'll need to continue to uh, with that conversation to see what ideas they have as well. But we wanna get the word out again internally within the community, but, but more importantly beyond our community to let people know that, uh, you know, wel welcome people back to Seal Beach if you will. Welcome our, our visitors back to, uh, to Seal Beach. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I had a few questions. Some of them I think have already been answered. Um, the the one hundred and ten thousand that number does not include loss of parking revenue in the parking lot. No, that is correct. It does not. It does not take into account the loss of of those spaces within the Electric Avenue parking lot. That's correct. Okay. Uh, and uh, just to follow up on the marketing, we'd be like placing ads in the sun, doing social media notices on our website too. That sort of, I guess the sun is not free, but um, some of this is, is possibly. Um, and I just had a question about the, so we would have the communal dining for restaurants that are on Main Street that could access this? Do, does it seem like most of them that's a possibility? I'm trying to figure out what this is. So it would be take out, you'd take out and you go to the communal tables or would there be some sort of delivery to the tables? That's what I was trying to picture how, how the different restaurants would be using this. Uh, great question. And we, we would leave that open to the restaurants if they wanted to provide a, a delivery service uh, to that spot. Um, it, it, we would certainly wouldn't uh, exclude that. Um, however, in the engagement I had with a few of the, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of the restaurant owners, uh, they basically said they would have to provide a takeout environment at, that it's, uh, they just wouldn't have the resources to be able to, to deliver or provide any service at those spots, uh, but they would have to, uh, you know, establish a takeout environment for that. Okay. And, and we're still allowed to do takeout of liquor? So the, the takeout of liquor could occur, but in those communal locations, uh, we're still working with ABC, but they initially have identified that they would not be open for consumption of alcohol in those locations because somebody has somebody managing that has to have an ABC license to do that. Um, okay. How about the bistro tables that sit right outside the restaurant? Yes, now those would, if, if a restaurateur is able to secure a temporary catering license, which is a, uh, a new provision that ABC has come out with as a result of what's happening right now, if they're able to secure that temporary catering, catering license, in addition to, you know, to our permit for, for the bistro tables, then yes, alcohol could be consumed, could be consumed at those uh, tables. Okay, I, I was just trying to figure out if, if people don't want to use it for one reason or another, then, you know, uh, what we, we, we do, I suppose we could end it if it wasn't being used, but um, let's see. Uh, so as far as the other restaurants in town, whether it's the, uh, the Bay City Center, the Rossmore Center, the shops, uh, um, the shops at Rossmore, sorry, the old ranch or the Pacific Gateway. So the, they're able to 
apply for their own uh, permit and use their own tables and it would be similar to placing a bistro table outside of a, a on Main Street. Is Absolutely, right? or it could even be larger than that. Um, okay. For example, we've been working with Spaghettini uh -huh. and Glory Days both uh, with uh, their desire to expand their outdoor seating. Spaghettini has a fairly large outdoor space. Okay. They, uh, have proposed to place tables uh, and they're working with us on that. Um, it could be Fortune Cookie restaurant up in shops at Rossmore that currently does not have any outdoor seating, but they have space in front of their restaurant and, and we would work with them through that temporary permit to, to allow that to occur in that space. Okay, so those that have a park a sidewalk, kind of wide sidewalk or a parking lot, they could uh, work with you to, to work on something too. And, the, and you said the media campaign would cover all these restaurants too? Yes, we would, it would be citywide for restaurants and retail and services. Okay. Um, let's see. Occupancy. Okay. I get. I think that's all my questions. Thank you. I have a follow up, if I may. Sure. Um, the Payway Restaurant. I do believe that they can have food service out there as part of their original permit. I may be wrong. Uh, but when I was on the planning commission, I think we granted them outdoor eating. Um, so it may have fallen off the radar at some point, because I don't think Payway used it very much. Um, but I think their original approval included that. So that would make it a little easier for them. Thank you for mentioning that. We'll, we'll look into that, definitely. So, Sandra, would that go with the business? Because that's now fortune cookies. So yeah, that, yeah, it goes. Yeah, it goes so with, with the business. The, with the, the, the site. Yeah, cool. as long as it's a restaurant, sure. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, were there any other questions? Yes, I had one uh, okay. small follow up with Les. Um, were we also going to um, allow some additional signage that the restaurants? or biz other businesses could, um, could place that might not otherwise be allowed on a permanent basis? Um, yes, we'll, we'll definitely work with, work, uh, work with them through this permit process to identify an additional signage. Um, and we have been, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Yes, absolutely. We're, good. We're definitely gonna uh, explore those options as, as they bring them forward. Great, and, and again, I wanna thank you also for the, the intense effort that you put into this and in coming up with a plan in such a short time. That's my last okay. comment. <laughs> okay, Does, were there any, any other comments? Okay. Um, does, can I get a motion to approve? I'd like to make a motion to approve this, this project. It's okay. gonna be really interesting. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. City Clerk Harper, could you uh, call for the vote by vote call, roll call, please? Thank you. Mayor Sistarsik, how do you vote? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Kalmyk, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Vera Papa, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Moore, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Masalavid, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, that passes five zero. Okay, we're going to now move on to the consent calendar. Items on the consent calendar are considered to be routine and are enacted by a single motion with the exception of items removed by council members. Okay, we had no items removed. So could I get a motion to approve the consent calendar as? Motion to approve. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, City Clerk Harper, could you take the vote by roll call, please? Mayor Sistarsik, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kalmyk, how do you vote? Yes. 
Council Member Varapapa, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Moore, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Masalavid, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, that passes five zero. We'll move on. Uh, uh, there are no public hearing. There's no unfinished or continued business. So we'll move on to new business. Item K, calling and consolidation of election November 3rd, 2020. Um, City Clerk Harper, do we have- Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mayor Sestarsic. Mayor and members of the City Council, the item before you tonight, it's pretty standard. It is just to receive your approval to call for and give notice to hold the general municipal election with the statewide general election on Tuesday, November 3rd. With that, there's four items included. The first is Ordinance 1684, and pursuant, and pursuant to Section 506 of the City Charter, the City Council hereby calls and orders the general municipal election to be held on Tuesday, November 3rd with the statewide election for the purpose of electing City Council members for the full term of four years in Council District 2 and in Council District 4. This ordinance will be published at least three times in the city's official newspaper and at least 10 days prior to the election. Resolution 7039 pursuant to the election code 10403, it requests that the Board of Supervisors, it requests the Board of Supervisors to consolidate the general municipal, municipal election with the statewide general election to be held on November 3rd, 2020. And a copy of this signed resolution will be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors and the Registrar of Voters Office. Resolution 7040, it regulates that each candidate for the elective office may prepare a candidate statement on, an, on a form that is approved by the city clerk, that's provided by the city clerk, I'm sorry. And the statement should be a brief description of the candidate's education and qualifications, and it should not be more than 200 words. And finally, Resolution 7041, pursuant to City Charter Section 509, provided that no candidate receives a majority of 50, a majority, which is 50 plus one votes, there shall be a municipal runoff election on January 26, 2021, to be consolidated with the county. Just to note, the nomination period begins Monday, July 13th, through Friday, August 7, 2020, during normal business hours and by appointment only. Information for canceled candidates will be available on the city website on the city clerk's homepage. With that, that concludes my report and I am available for any questions you may have. Thank you, city clerk Harper. Uh, did, did any of the council members have any questions on this item, comments? Okay, seeing none, can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you very much. City Clerk Harper, could you please call for the vote by roll call? Mayor Sestarsic, how do you vote? Yes. Council, Council Member Verapapa, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kalmick, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Moore, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Masalavid, how do you vote? Yes. This is five zero, thank you very much. We'll move on to item L. We just, we just need to read the title of that ordinance, Mayor. <clears throat> Pardon me, it's ordinance number 1684, an ordinance of the city of Seal Beach, California, calling for and giving notice of the holding of a general municipal election to be held on Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, for the election of certain officers as required by the provisions of the city charter. Move on to item L, adoption of updated transportation analysis guidelines pursuant to Senate Bill 743. City Manager Ingram, do you have a report? Yes, Mayor, thank you. I'm gonna turn this item over to our Public Works Director, Steve Miter. I um, also wanted to note that we have um, our consultant who's been working with us um, on this item on the Zoom call tonight. Um, as I mentioned, um, we've been working, staff's been working closely with our consultant to update our transportation analysis guidelines as required by Senate Bill 743. 
um, which requires adoption of these new guidelines um, by July 2020. So with that, I'm going to turn this item over and Steve will summarize the item and introduce our consultant. Steve? Um, thank you. Am I sound check? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, we can hear making you. Sure. Okay, making sure. Uh, thank you, City Manager Ingram, uh, Honorable Mayor, members of the council. This item is being presented to the uh, City Council to give an overview of a proposed update to the city's CEQA transportation analysis guideline in accordance with Senate Bill 743 requirements. The new CEQA transportation analysis metric contained in this bill was developed by the governor's office of planning and research based on vehicle miles with the intended goals of reducing reliance on automobile, automobile travel, reducing emissions and encouraging high density infill developments. The proposed, this proposed policy update resulted from extensive statewide public outreach by the state over the past five years. At this point, I'd like to introduce Sean Daly with Atiris. Sean prepared the proposed CEQA transportation analysis guidelines update for our city and will be giving a brief PowerPoint overview. At the conclusion of Sean's presentation, I'll be wrapping up with staff's recommendation as well as be available for questions. I'm now going to hand this over to hand the presentation over to Sean. Thank you. Uh, good evening, honorable mayor and council members. Uh, the presentation covers the changes to the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines as they pertain uh, to the assessment of environmental impacts of projects on transportation. So um, if we could go to the next slide. Uh, starting in July 2020, all CEQA lead agencies, including the city of Seal Beach, will need to conduct their CEQA transportation analysis in conformance with Senate Bill 743. It directs that measures of vehicle congestion are no longer accepted as environmental impacts and um, the Office of Planning and Research, the State Office of Planning and Research, developed a new metric based on vehicle miles traveled of a project, which is, is the total distance of vehicle travel. Uh, this can be characterized as reorienting CEQA analysis to support development patterns and transportation services associated with reducing greenhouse gases. You can go to the next slide. Uh, the primary determinants of vehicle trips are, are household demographics and the geographic distributions of, of those households, employment, school, shopping centers, and recreational destinations uh, that generally influence the distance of travel. Uh, generally speaking, VMT, vehicle miles traveled, is lower in areas that have a more diverse set of land use that's in a close proximity, which, which shortens the trips and where there are alternatives to car travel. Um, since assessing total vehicle miles traveled uh, would disadvantage larger projects and generally discourage economic growth, the state developed a, a efficiency metric, which is an index of VMT by population or employment. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, the state law does not prohibit using the traditional operations-based analysis for non sequa pur purposes. So most cities are retaining traffic studies to evaluate adequate public infrastructure consistent with their general plans. Uh, next slide. So the, um, the tr transportation analysis guidelines that the city previously had essentially is now being split into two parts. Um, a, part A would be the traditional guidelines for a traffic site, which is looking at uh, traffic and facilities, uh, access to sites. Um, and then the second section, part B, is the CEQA environmental assessment. Um, it should be said that, that both have sort of a screening thresholds by which a project would be too small or just by category assumed not to have an impact. Uh, specifically for the CEQA assessment, the most important uh, one of those screen thresholds is trips that generate less than 200, or sorry, projects that generate less than 250 trips per day. Uh, that is in about a 37 unit apartment building or a 21,000 square foot office building. 
anything below those sizes would generally be um, considered less than significant without any further analysis. Uh, next slide. Just to sort of orient, uh, these are maps where the blue areas show those areas that are below the city average as far as uh, vehicle miles traveled. And the gray areas are above. And it, it is a little misleading because we have very large areas um, without a lot of activity or uh, is the naval facility. Um, but the, these were calculated using a regional model developed by OCTA, which is developed every few years. Uh, and the land uses are consolidated into zones, which are roughly the size of census tracts. Um, so the one on the left is um, the residential trips, uh, VMT per capita, and the one the right are, is the commute trips uh, per employee above and below um, city average, just as a reference. So next slide. Um, if, a, if a project was large enough to actually be analyzed and then it was shown, uh, to have a VMT that was higher than the uh, city's average, um, it would need to be mitigated to less than significant. Uh, and that would be accomplished through on-site and off-site improvements to reduce the number of trips from the proposed project. And that's the conclusion of the presentation. I'll turn it back over to Steve. Uh, thank you, Sean. So tonight's recommendation is that city council adopt resolution 7042 adopting the updated transportation analysis guidelines dated Jan June 2020. Uh, and that concludes our, our presentation and report. Are there any questions? Um, Councilman Verapapa, did you have any questions? Not at this time, thank you. Okay, Councilman Moore, did you have any questions? Could, could you go into how this is going to affect uh, like a specifically Seal Beach? Uh, yes, Councilman Moore. Sean, could you please answer that question? Sure. Um, I don't think it's going to have a, a major effect. Um, the, you know, the traditional traffic analysis will continue that the city has always done. Um, it is probably pretty rare that you're going to have a, a project that is, in quotes, big enough um, to even have a CEQA analysis uh, performed on it. But if it was, um, they would have to do, um, uh, th that project, that project pro proponent would have to conduct that, that analysis uh, under the guidance of the city. Um, generally speaking, um, it's not foreseen that it, it's going to cause, I guess, a lot of burden on um, new um, developments. Mostly it was set up to uh, streamline developments in infill locations that uh, maybe were forecast to have a lot of traffic impact um, and uh, had to build big intersections to deal with that. And, and that was sort of the uh, problem that was trying to be solved by this legislation. So it's mostly focused on, on, on that side of, of things. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Council Member Ber um, Masalavit, did you have questions? No, I think you just answered my questions. Thank you. Okay, um, Mayor Pro Tem Kalmik, did you have questions? No, they were answered. Thank you. Okay, I I had a couple. I. I did watch the planning commission meeting and I was still confused about the, I understand the, the, uh, the circle that is drawn around a project with estimated customers coming in. I didn't quite understand the employee VMT, how you knew where employees were gonna be living for a project. For a project. Sure. Um, so that's that. Those are sort of embedded into this regional model that OCTA develops, and it's at its very root a, a gravity-based model. It's got a lot of inputs to it, but by gravity-based, I mean that it assumes uh, that closer items are more often um, reached. They do household surveys as well for uh, commute trips. There's U.S. Census data um, from the their household surveys 
about where people live and work. And so those all sort of go into it. It is a very regional model. Um, and the way the guidelines are written, if, if it's not adequate to the needs of a, of a project proponent, then, and they could provide uh, sufficient information and uh, maybe zip, I've worked on projects where they have zip codes of employees or that kind of thing. And that's just better information than they could use that information. So it's the, the guideline structure is a bit flexible um, to, to how good the information the proponent can bring to the project. It, it just seems to me that it'd be easier to get like a Starbucks approved and something like a hotel or a I mean, a destination shopping center or some kind of larger project. If you had, like, we have a Boeing, which has engineers work there. If you have professionals versus just maybe regular people, it seems like they would draw from maybe a, a wider range and you would have, anyway, I, I just found it a little bit confusing or uh, just seeming like some of the more major projects would be difficult to put in. We You're did right. have, like, yeah. <laughs> no, you, you are right in that um, the, I guess, more higher income jobs, uh, mm -hmm. engineering jobs, they are going to have draw from a, a, a wider area. Um, in general, the neighborhoods serving uses for the most part are going to be more localized employment. And, and that is sort of a, a embedded in that um, as well. It, and, it, and it is uh, sort of, you sort of hit it right there with the, with the difference between this and the way it used to be like a Starbucks that could, or an In-N-Out burger wants to come that generate a lot of trips. Um, it actually, those are more local than say a Boeing would be. Uh, Boeing, yeah. those people are coming from farther away. And so uh, the benefit though of having say a large employer like that, they have more of an ability to mitigate that through van pool or carpool programs. So um, there's a little bit more opportunity to mitigate those, those distances. Okay, we did have, when we had the LA, uh, LA Fitness coming in or to, trying to come in, we did have, I think we had a CEQA document for that one. So I, I, I just think it's possible, but I, I, I wondered if that would limit, if that would limit us or if there's uh, just, you can only have so many coffee shops. So anyway. Um, Okay, uh, I guess that's I guess that's all my questions. Thank you. Okay, did did anyone ha else have any follow up questions? Then could I get a motion? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, City Clerk Harper, could you take the vote by roll call, please? Mayor Sistarsik, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Temp Kalmick, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Vera Papa, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Moore, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Masalavit, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, that carries 5 0. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item M, Municipal Code Amendment Prohibiting the Use of Electronic Smoking Devices Where Conventional Cigarettes Are Prohibited. City Manager Ingram, do you have a staff report? Yes, Mayor, thank you. I'm going to turn this item over to Chief Gonshak to summarize um, for you tonight. And the Chief actually brought this item for you or before you tonight, uh, which will assist the police department in their educational and enforcement efforts with respect to the use of e-cigarettes uh, in areas within the city where uh, traditional smoking is now prohibited. So with that, I'm going to turn the item over to the chief. Thank you, City Manager Ingram. Good evening, Madam Mayor, City Council, City Manager, City Staff, and Seal Beach residents. In anticipation of the Seal Beach Pier reopening tomorrow, we are presenting before you tonight an amendment to our current Seal Beach Municipal Code numbers 9.05.060 and 7.55.010. 
This amendment adds language to our current municipal code, which prohibits smoking traditional tobacco, cigarettes, pipes, cigars, in specific areas such as the pier and city parks. <clears throat> However, the current code as it reads today does not prohibit the use of electronic cigarettes. Several studies have shown the detrimental health effects that the use of these electronic cigarettes cause on people, especially amongst our teenagers and younger individuals in our community. The frequent use of electronic cigarettes, which meant excuse me, which emit a smoke-like vapor, similar in appearance to the exhaled smoke from cigarettes and other conventional tobacco products, and voluntarily exposes members of the public to potentially dangerous secondhand byproducts. The use also undermines enforcement of no smoking laws and threatens to undermine compliance with smoking regulations and reverse the progress that has been made in establishing a social norm that smoking is not now prohibited or permitted in certain locations. With that, we conducted an audit of several other cities here in Southern California to see if similar laws against the use of electronic cigarettes were in place. Those results are as follows. In Orange County, 47% of all cities prohibit electronic cigarettes where traditional cigarettes are prohibited. On our OC beaches, 50%, excuse me, 57% of all OC beaches prohibit electronic cigarettes on the beach. San Diego beaches, 100% of San Diego beaches prohibit electronic cigarettes on the beach. Los Angeles beaches are 75% of LA beaches prohibited. State beaches, the state of California beaches also prohibit electronic cigarettes. Los Angeles, Orange County and San Diego total, 80% of all three of those counties beaches prohibit electronic cigarettes. In closing, it is our recommendation tonight to all of you to amend those two Seal Beach Municipal Codes and to prohibit the use of any electronic cigarette anywhere that traditional smoking is also prohibited, i.e. the beach, the pier and or the park areas. This concludes my presentation to all of you and I'm available for questions if need be. City Manager Ingram. Okay, all right. Uh, should I move on to council member comments, please? Uh, council member Vera Papa, did you have any questions? Yeah, I did. I had a quick question for um, the chief. Um, what's the current uh, law or rules on Main Street for smoking cigarettes and electronic cigarettes? Um. <laughs> well, as it currently stands, it's not prohibited. Um, you're allowed to smoke on Main Street and um, as well as electronic cigarettes as it stands. Do you know of any other cities that prohibits um, smoking cigarettes on Main Street? Off the top of my head, the only city that I know you cannot smoke anywhere um, in public is in Orange County specifically is Laguna Beach, but I'd be happy to research all the other uh, couple dozen other cities if you'd like. Well, I think for another conversation, I would. Um, I think it's something to discuss um, maybe more publicly, but as far as this uh, ordinance, I have no other questions. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. you bet. And we actually have a tobacco grant that I have uh, an officer or sergeant I can put in charge of that to get back those results to you in an email if you like. Great, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Council Member Moore, did you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, Council Member Masalava, did you have any questions? No, I agree. Okay, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kalmik, did you have any questions? Nope, thank you. Okay, and I am good too, so do I have a motion to approve? I'll move. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. City Clerk Harper, could you please take the vote by roll call? Mayor Sestarsik, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kalmik, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Masalabit, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Moore, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Vera Papa, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, that carries five zero. That's ordinance 1685, an ordinance of the city council of the city of Seal Beach, prohibiting the use of electronic smoking devices in public parks on beaches and on the Seal Beach Pier. Okay, thank you very much. We'll move on to item N ratification of subrecipient agreement between the County of Orange and the City of Seal Beach for coronavirus relief funds for economic support provided by the city. 
City Manager Ingram, did you have a report? Yes, Mayor, um, thank you. Uh, on Tuesday, May 26, the Orange County Board of Supervisors directed the CEO's office to execute subrecipient agreements with District 2 cities to transfer each city's allocation of the $75 million in business grants funded by the CARES Act. The agreement allows each city to directly administer grants to small businesses within each city consistent with the requirements of the CARES Act. Each supervisorial district was allocated $15 million, which represents an equal share of the 75 million of total business grants available within the County of Orange. The allocation basis to cities within each board district that was used was the most recent census tract population count with unincorporated areas in the districts allocated their share to be administered by the County of Orange. The City of Seal Beach share of this CARES Act grant funding allocation is approximately $562,000. As the Council is aware, on May 29th, um, I signed and submitted this subrecipient agreement between the County of Orange and the City for coronavirus relief funds to provide economic support to small businesses in Seal Beach in order to immediately secure the grant funding on behalf of the city. This allocation was received um, by the city last Tuesday, June 2nd and set aside in a separate fund um, specifically for this Small Business Cares Act grant funding program. Um, I've been working closely with Community Development Director Les Johnson and our Finance Director Kelly Telford, as well as my colleagues in surrounding cities on the most appropriate options for administering and managing the Small Business Grant Funding Program, considering all of the co compliance requirements of the CARES Act, as well as our limited staffing. So at this time, I will turn the presentation over to our Community Development Director, Les Johnson, to briefly discuss some of the initial options that we've been exploring in order to bring a recommendation to the Council at the June 22nd Council meeting. Les? Uh, thank you, City Manager Ingram. Uh, Honorable Mayor, Council members, uh, as was identified, use of these funds are limited to small business grants. Uh, a number of uh, the cities within the region have already established small business grant programs uh, due to the final in financial impacts associated with the coronavirus. Some have moved forth uh, with other funding sources received uh, and have been able to not only establish a program, but have actually re uh, received applications and in some instances already distributed funds. Uh, we at staff at the staff level here are in the process of gathering key information uh, from these cities in preparation for our own program. And at this time, uh, we intend to utilize a third, uh, third party to assist us with this process. There's one group in particular that we're uh, considering who can provide this service for little or no charge. Uh, it is currently working with multiple Orange County cities. Um, the services provided would assist us with setting up the application process, holding webinars, processing the applications, and preparing what will likely be a lottery system for the selection of funding recipients. And we are in the uh, gathering that information in hope to bring you back a proposal to you for your consideration uh, during the June 22nd meeting. So a lot of work uh, at, at our end, uh, but we're very excited to have this opportunity uh, to directly benefit uh, our small businesses in our community. And again, we'll be reporting back to you at the June 22nd meeting. And that concludes uh, my update and I'll turn it back over to City Manager Ingram. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Jim? Yes, Mayor, um, if there's any specific questions of council, otherwise we'd be looking for a motion to approve um, the resolution ratifying uh, my signature on this subrecipient agreement. Okay. I, uh, Council Member Moore, did you have any questions? Um, I, I guess my concern is just uh, how can we streamline it to make it as quickly, quick and easy as possible for businesses to apply? Is that using this third party uh, company, you think? 
Yes, that's what um, our intent is, Councilman, based on um, discussions that we've had internally as well as with our respective colleagues in other cities that are um, looking at utilizing a similar format with a, with a third party um, to administer and manage this program. How soon could businesses start applying? Well, as, you know, as um, we both mentioned, we intend to bring a, a recommendation to the council at your June 22nd meeting and assuming that there's um, council support um, for moving forward with the recommendation to utilize a third party administrator, then we'd be ready to move forward immediately thereafter. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, okay. council member Verapapa, did you have any questions? No, thank you, I think it's a good idea and I'm looking forward to seeing the results. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Masalavit, did you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions. I think it's um, a good opportunity uh, for us to, to um, participate in a really well needed project, getting some money back to the people who work and have businesses in this city. So move ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kalmik, did you have any questions, uh, comments? No, other than, um, you know, I agree that using a third party will be the most, um, in the end, the most expeditious and also uh, ensure fairness um, in the distribution rather than the city having to make those decisions. Okay, thank you. And I also would hope that the, we could get the, the help out as, as fast, quickly as possible. And I think a third uh, party administrator is good because this money has to be used uh, under the guidance of the CARES Act. And so it, uh, it's good to have somebody to make sure that everything's done correctly uh, to help us out too. So, um, okay, if there's no further questions, could I get a motion to approve? I'll be glad to make this motion. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? A second. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Clerk Harper, could you please take the vote by roll call? Mayor Sustarsik, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kalmik, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Vera Papa, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Moore, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Masalavit, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. That passes 5 0. Okay, and that one we don't need to have a statement. Okay, so we'll move on to adjournment then. Tonight's meeting will be adjourned in memory of Jim Gross, Senior Risk Manager for California Joint Powers Insurance Authority. CJPIA, who passed away on May 25th, 2020. Jim joined the California JPIA staff on September 10th, 2002, and served as a senior risk manager for almost 18 years. He managed training, risk management, claims, and finance for members in Southern California, Los Angeles County, and Orange County. He was a subject matter expert on issues relating to contracts, Cal OSHA, and the Americans with Disabilities Act. Jim worked with the city since 2002 and was always supportive of the city's goals and objectives, whether it was dealing with insurance and risks related to the city's centennial celebration, of which he received hundreds of emails throughout that year, or educating staff on risk aversion and or policy updates. He ensured our city was ahead of the curb and in compliance. Jim was also a Seal Beach resident and an overall positive and good natured guy who was always quick to respond with advice. As one of the authority's first risk managers, Jim touched all of our members, said California JPII CEO John Schull. He was not only a trusted voice in making risk management decisions, but also their friend. His values and vision will be missed by the authority and its member organizations, and by me personally. 
On behalf of the city of Seal Beach, I send condolences to his family and friends. Are there any council members that would like to comment? Okay, seeing none, I adjourn the city council to Monday, June 22nd, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. to meet in closed session if deemed necessary. Thank you for attending and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.